do you think a 90% confidence that spirits are real is justified? After talking to you, no, I do not. Because you've shown me that my evidence isn't as concrete as I thought it was to be. But instead, it's evidence that could be used to explain either a lot of things that would just... Does it make sense? That you were there. So I, I'm no longer, I'm, I don't feel 90% conf, confident now. Any press about street epistemology is good press, in my view, at this stage in the game. Would you have time for an interview? Hmm? Oh, okay. I could do a joint interview if you have a friend coming. No, we got to hit out somewhere. Oh, okay. No biggie. But well, where is this for? Well, I'm practicing street epistemology. It's where you use questions to challenge a person's claim that they make because they think that it's true. Okay, yeah. I remember you. Do you? I do. You're Maritza. It's good to see you again. Nice you. Thanks for coming back. What have you been up to? Work and school. Finals. Work and school. Finals is next week? Uh, well, for me, it's this week. Okay. Because there are a lot of essays. Mm. Do you want to try going after your second puzzle piece? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. Can you stand in the shade over here? Because the last time I interviewed you, I don't know if you remember, mm -hmm. you kept drifting this way out of the camera oh, shot. I and I, I was like, can you come back? I tend to move a lot. I'm very, I'm very, like, I don't know. I don't see still. Okay. That's fine. You're a mover and a shaker? Yes, I really am. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I remember right, we chatted maybe three weeks ago to a month ago, maybe. Yeah. It was a while ago. It was. It really was. <laughs> and I, if I remember right, uh, Grand. Uh, yeah. yeah, Maritza. Yeah. If I remember right, the whole conversation we didn't even talk about a specific claim. No. It was a it was a broader discussion about truth and whether a person should value it. Whether you prefer knowing the truth, even if it would cause you to not believe, to lose a belief. Mm -hmm. And it could be painful. We, we had the metaphor of uh, moving like large pieces of furniture around in our brains, right? Like it might take a lot of effort to push that piece of furniture out of the way, but if it's not true, then it's worth the effort to move it out. It really is, because that means you have more space. Yeah, more space for things that are true. Okay. So do you want to keep on the broader discussion of truth or do you want to shift to a particular claim that you've been thinking about, maybe something that you've been thinking is true and now you're starting to question or wonder about or something else? you got full control over the topic here. Uh, that's the amazing part of this conversation. <laughs> I mean, we can focus on a specific thing because I've been thinking a lot about how... I personally believe, like, that spirits can come back and, like, are with us, mm -hmm. whether it's, doesn't mean I, like, practice it in me, but I believe it's a big possibility. You think it's possible that spirits can come back yes, like, to us after a human body, after a human dies? Yes. Okay. And you said something like, I'm not... I don't, like, actively, like, do, like, the whole, like, trying to talk to them, but I, I believe they're there. You have a view that when humans die, it's possible that it can happen, or it's actually happening? It's, it's that they stay with us. Like, I, hmm. like, my grandma, she raised me with the belief of how once you die you have to leave a cup of water out because our spirits are still with us they stay with us for a good amount of time before they go wherever they need to go so you keep hmm. a water a cup of water nearby so that in case they get thirsty on their on their travels they can drink that your grandma advises leaving out a cup of water mm -hmm. for spirits because after people pass, they don't necessarily go away they, right they don't away. Go right away, right immediately. And what's the purpose of the water? In case like they get thirsty in their travels, they can drink water. If they get thirsty during their travels. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, so hearkening back to our discussion about truth, if you were to 
come to the realization that you don't have a good reason for thinking that this is true, painful as it might be, would you be willing to abandon your view or significantly lower your confidence in it? I think if someone proved to me and came and told me that it's not true, I would believe less in it and would practice it less. I wouldn't practice it. Well, how... Yeah, let's get a sense of how sure you are that this really is true. I think have you watched any of my videos since we talked? No, I have not. Okay. I'd like to propose a scale of confidence in the claim okay. that it's factually true. Zero to 100, and 100 would be, there's no question in my mind, there's no doubt. I have 100% confidence that it's real and true. And then zero would be, all I have is questions, all I have is doubt. I don't think that it's true. I would be like a good 90. Okay. A good 90. You have a 90% confidence that spirits yes. come back to us after people die. Mm -hmm. And in order for you to move, correct me if this isn't what you're saying, but you were talking about, it, it would need to be proved to me that it's not true in order for me to budge off of my current level of confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay. It sounds like you would require evidence to move you down. Mm -hmm. Did you use evidence to move you up? Not scientifically based evidence, but personal, like perfect personal experience as to what I've seen and also what I have seen others witness. You've had a personal experience and then you've also heard reports of other people who have had personal experiences? Yes, like, um, like with my, when my uncle passed away, well, before he passed away, he was a few, he was sick, and he kept talking about how he kept seeing my grandpa. My grandpa had already passed away for years, and he kept saying how he saw my grandpa. My grandpa was with us. Mm. So he was talking about it, and how my grandpa was calling him, and for the time that he saw my grandpa, like, he was feeling better. And then, like, a few days later, he died. And then with me, I kept hearing, like, in my house, my grandpa died in my mom's room. So now my mom's room won't stay locked sometimes. Like, the door will lock it, and at mid middle of the night, we'll hear the footsteps, and the door opens. Huh. And then sometimes we can hear my grandpa, like, calling up to us. So we leave a cup of water by his picture. Interesting. Did this stuff start happening within, like immediately after he passed away? Mm -hmm. Does it still continue to this day? Yes, sometimes. Hmm. We can hear like the footsteps. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm wondering if somebody who wasn't even aware that this was a possibility, had had loved ones that they knew very well pass away, and they had no idea. They, it didn't even cross their minds that they might be spirits or that they, sh they should be leaving out water for them. And they started experiencing these same things. The door, a locked door, finding its way open, um, hearing what sounds like, like footsteps in the middle of the night or something, or maybe during the day. I don't know what time of day we're talking about here. <laughs> But they're experiencing the same things that you are experiencing. There's no doubt in my mind that you're experiencing something. If they were to experience the same thing, and yet they weren't aware of this concept of spirits, how do you think that they would respond to it? What do you think might go through their mind? That maybe something's faulty with the door, or that... Uh... Or maybe that they're sleep deprived or still sleeping, I think. Maybe there's a problem with the door, maybe they're sleep deprived. Yeah, or like they're just tired and they think they're hearing things. Tired? Okay. Oh. Now I'm scared that I'm like... You're good. It's, it's a pretty wide lens and I think you're in it. As long as you just kind of stay in the shade there, I think you'll be good. I appreciate you <laughs> being uh, concerned about the camera shot. Okay. I think what we're saying is that if somebody wasn't even aware of spirits or didn't even have this concept in their mind, if these things were to happen to them, they would possibly think of explanations for them other than spirits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
if you weren't exposed to the idea of spirits, do you think that you would be coming to the similar conclusions that they might, or something else? I'm not really sure, because I've always grown up with the, with the subject of spirits, like, respecting them. Mm -hmm. But possibly? I don't know. I feel like it would depend as to, like, who I associated myself with if I didn't. Because I know, like, a lot of my friends, some of my friends believe in it. Mm. That's, and then I have some that don't, and they just say you're superstitious. Okay. You know people who believe in it and people who don't. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Do you think that what you're designating as evidence warrants being 90% confident that it's real and true? I didn't understand that question. Yeah. No, I didn't understand. I didn't like... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to repeat it back. Oh. Do you think that the reasons that you're offering for the explanation that you're coming up with warrant being 90% sure that it's spirits? Like the explanation against it? Like, I guess what I'm... So I think we're, here's, here's where we're at. We recognize that there might be people who were told about spirits, like yourself, and people that aren't told about spirits. And that if they were to each experience similar things, doors opening when they should be closed or locked, the sound of footsteps, and if we look at the conclusions that they're coming to, and we're noticing that some are concluding that it's spirits and some are chalking it up to other explanations, if we recognize that people are coming up with possible solutions or explanations to it, based on what they think might be the case or not think is the case? Mm -hmm. Do you think 90% confidence that spirits exist is justified? I think it seems justified to me, like, because I believe it's true. <laughs> but mm -hmm. if, we're, if they're going to prove to me and show me, like, give me the evidence, then yes, that seems like a whole completely thing and my faith in it might change. Hmm. If they actually show me, oh, like, hey, like the door is unleveled and thus causing it to open or something like that. Uh -huh. Or maybe when the trees hit it or something. Like if they give me like the actual, they show me why it does it. Like if they prove to me, then yes, it might falter my belief. Yes. Right. You will move down on your confidence that spirits are real if it could be demonstrated to you there's some sort of evidence to back it up. Yes. Is the sound of footsteps or the opening of a door evidence for spirits? Or is it a claim that you're using to conclude that spirits are real? I believe it would be evidence because I've experienced it and I haven't been proven wrong. But mm. it's a good question. I don't know, I'm thinking, oh, I forgot that you do this. <laughs> right now, that's going to be in my head all day. It could be so that it's a claim I'm making to support my belief because I have no actual like concrete evidence to support it. But at the same time, there's no concrete evidence to go against me. Yeah. So I would say it's a claim then. I'm claiming it to be to spirits. I'm You're claiming it. it to be spirits. Yes. Right, like, so you hear footsteps in the middle of the night or whatever, so whatever time of day. I don't think we've even established when you hear it. What time of day do you usually hear this? Usually at night. Okay, at night you hear footsteps, or you hear what sounds like footsteps. Okay. Is that is that a good characterization, or are you hearing footsteps? I 
pretty sure they're the footsteps. They sound like how my grandpa used to walk. Okay. They sound like his footsteps. Right. You hear footsteps or... Will you, will you be charitable and let me say you hear what sounds like footsteps or are you hearing footsteps? <laughs> I don't want to twist your arm here. You already have me questioning you about my evidence. Here's what I'm wondering about your evidence that you're using to claim with 90% confidence that spirits are real. Could I be raised in a household who thinks that leprechauns are real? All right. And if you, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you actually hear what sounds like footsteps, I'm going to be consistent with my terminology, okay. that you're justified in being 90% confident that those are leprechauns pitter-pattering around the house. Would I be justified in my 90% by calling those the sound of footsteps evidence to justify my claim? No, because the electric ones aren't real. Uh. Okay, now I see what you're doing. What am I doing? So, it's mostly like saying that my claim, I'm claiming my evidence to be that because I believe in it so much. When in reality, the evidence I have is something that you can shift to say it's anything. So it's not really proving it's spirit. If what you're calling evidence can be used to justify my 90% confidence that leprechauns are real, and it can also be used to confirm that 90% confidence that demons are real, and 90% confidence that spirits of our loved ones are real, what does that say about the quality of your evidence? Well, that's not a good evidence. Well, it doesn't have a strong base because it could be used for anything. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, if that's the case, oh, is this moving too fast? No, but I'm like questioning everything, mm -hmm. <laughs> questioning my belief. That tends to happen when people talk to me. Yeah, I, I, I forgot about this part. <laughs> Let me ask you one more question. Okay. Because okay. You always catch me when I go to work. You're the one that's catching me. That's true, but you. <laughs> I wanted, well, maybe the first I time wanted, I caught you. Wanted my second piece. You want your second piece, okay? Yes, I have the red one. My question to you is: Now that we've talked and we've explored the quality of the evidence that you're putting forward, and you may have other pieces of evidence, but we've kind of just examined one. But we might be able to overlay the the same template mm -hmm. to all the little bits mm -hmm. of proof or evidence that you're saying. Do you think a 90% confidence that spirits are real is justified? After talking to you, no, I do not. Because you've shown me that my evidence isn't as concrete as I thought it was to be. But instead, it's evidence that can be used to explain either a lot of things that would just... doesn't make sense. that you were there. So I, I'm no longer... I'm. I don't feel 90 confident now. Okay. Well, let's end it on that note. And then maybe we can meet again for a third talk. I rethink all this again. Mm -hmm. mm-hmm. You know what's really interesting when we have talks like this? When we discover that the evidence that we think we have that's supporting not just this claim about spirits, but maybe you have other claims, it could be kind of not overwhelming, maybe overwhelming, but sometimes like, like um, what's the word I'm even looking for? Like it could be daunting. Like, oh my goodness, what else am I calling evidence that I probably shouldn't That's what I'm doing because right it's not sufficient to arrive at these conclusions. That's actually what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. Do you still have one of my cards? I've got new ones now. Do you? Mm -hmm. I think I still have it. And you probably have an old style one. Probably. It was a white one. You still a white one? No, not It was blue. It was blue. Right? Oh, the no, back of it's white. Yes. Oh, no, I don't have it. I'll take another one. I will take another one. Did I give you a magnet the last yes, time? Yes, you did. Do you want another one of those? You do. And then which puzzle piece would you like this time? I'm going to take the blue one. Yes. Blue. Then I just got to come back for the yellow one. Mm-hmm. If you'd like. I am. Because now I have, I have to complete it now.
You know what I really like about this exchange that we've had, the two of them, is we start we started very broad with truth, mm -hmm. and it seemed like you came around. Like initially, you were like, "Well, hey, I, I can believe anything I want, even if it's not true, and if I get value from it or something." And then you're like, "Well, wait a second, no, I do value truth. Do. Don't let me put words in your mouth, but I think that's what we talked about." I do. I do value truth a lot. And now in this conversation, we actually took a we isolated a specific claim that you tend to make. Mm -hmm. And then we looked at the quality of the evidence that you're using to support the claim. It's not good evidence. Mm -hmm. That's the conclusion of this. It was not good evidence. Mm -hmm. Now I'm questioning whether all oh, my other evidence for my faith is like concrete. Your evidence for your faith? Not, not my faith, but like for other beliefs. Okay. Like I'm questioning whether my claims is it more because I believe it is or if it's actual concrete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did you notice something really interesting that it sounded like you demanded good evidence to move you down? Yeah. Were you being consistent in using good evidence to move you up? No, it was not. Mm. Because I, I had my belief in spirit and then just seeing that, I'm like, oh, there you go. It's connected. It's enough. But to disprove me, I actually gave a C. Like, okay, have you tested it multiple times? And can you explain it to me and, like, show me? Mm -hmm. It seemed like you were willing to hold me to a higher standard to disprove your claim than you required to, to believe in it. Yes. <laughs> Until next time. Until next time. Until next time. Maritza, wonderful chat. I'm always leaving this... Hey, questioning everything. Well, then I'm doing my job if that's the case. You are. You are. See you around. Wow. That was a fucking good talk. <laughs>